I could see like a bobcat being like a lanky guy that knows jujitsu. Like you, you might be surprised <laughs> once you get into the fight. Like it might be like, holy shit, this is a problem that I did not anticipate. Where a cougar is more direct in their threat, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Distinct. Distinct. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Bobcat, too small. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not intimidating. Like that's a middle school. That's a middle school. Uh, fucking mascot, right? It's, mm-hmm. It fits the size of, the, of, the, of a seventh grader. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, the bobcat, male bobcat, 14 to 40 pounds. Yeah, Female tiny. bobcat, 8.8 to 34. That's nothing. What's wow. nothing? Henry was bigger than that. That's what I'm saying. Like, you could, I could pick up and throw a bobcat like a football. Yeah, you could eat a bobcat. Yeah. You ain't eating a cougar. <laughs> no. I, the branding of the Bobcat really was hurt by Bobcat Goldwave as well. Like, I associate. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing intimidating about that man, and that's the number one Bobcat association I have. Yeah. Uh, he should change really his name point. to Robert Cat. And <laughs> he then should. He could be Robert Cat Goldthwaite. But, um, <laughs> guys, we're back after a long break. Last time, we talked about uh, what is weather, and there's money in the Leaf game was the title. Uh, we talked about uh, Flintstoning it. We talked about, uh, we saw Stuart, the bumbling customer footage. Um, Jeff had waking thoughts. There was a hot dog issue. Uh, the f- face museum. Uh, uh, icy hot while needing to pee. Deodorant. Uh, cookbooks. Okay. Accidental murder in a 22. But that was all the previous episode. Uh, this is 155. I got some more stuff too. I got some stuff to clean up. Can I just say before this, before this episode starts... If Andrew hasn't measured his back, I'm going to be livid. <laughs> oh, oh! don't you worry. Don't okay. you worry. <laughs> Should we start the episode? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. My name is T-Bone Ramsey and with me as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin <laughs> Free. Episode 155. Little quick, uh, at least we'll check in on everybody health wise. Uh, Gavin, how you doing? Pretty good. Good, good to know. <laughs> Nick, how you doing? All good. <laughs> All right, that's good to know. Uh, Eric, I'm a little concerned about you. How are you feeling? <laughs> so far, Jeff, so good. Okay, that's that's uh, that's quite a relief. Andrew, how are you doing? I have COVID, but I'm good. How about uh, you, somebody, Jeff? Somebody uh, asked me how I'm doing. Uh, yeah. I have COVID, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Wait, and this and this is the reason that Jeff asked me how I was doing because I am currently quarantining because I was around Jeff after he tested positive. You both have COVID again, Gavin. Yeah, why don't you have COVID? <laughs> Andrew I, I clearly and I clearly went out Italy. and got COVID. <laughs> Andrew didn't, didn't go to Italy either. Are you sure? <laughs> You're gonna start getting cucumber photos in Italy like in a week from now. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. That was really mean of you, Jeff, to open with knowing Gavin. How are you? Just knowing <laughs> the great when Gavin just great, great Jeff. Tell us more about how good you feel. <laughs> if that was a different order, I'd have been less excited about how good I felt <laughs> to try and make great. you guys feel better. <laughs> <laughs> now it's it's so uh, Andrew and I found out uh, I got COVID Monday or I got well, who knows when I got it. I was diagnosed with COVID Monday, and then he tested positive Tuesday. So we're we're going through it together. We, we're like we're buddies, though. We've decided. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I texted Jeff last night and I just wrote, remember when we made a podcast together? Because <laughs> it's been so long. This feels like the long, it probably isn't. This feels like the longest gap ever, though, for some reason. It feels so long. Oh, by the way, real fast, uh, Eric, uh, I have a producer, uh, a production related question I'd like to, to ask you. Sure. Okay. Uh, I would like to formally request a special one-time use regulation episode length variance to be used specifically for the end of episode extension purposes for today and today what? only because uh, we haven't been together in so long and we're only filming one episode. Maybe you'd let us go a few minutes over so we could catch up. Um, I'm checking my notes, uh, looking at schedules. Hang on. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Jeff, your request is granted. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Just like an extra wow. 10 minutes. That'd be nice. Give us some breathing room today, since it's so hard for Andrew and I. We to both could use, yeah, some breathing yeah. room, I think, would be good. <laughs> Any breathing, additional breathing space would be great. Gavin, before we recorded this, Gavin, you had a, you had a thing you said. What, what did you say? What, you had a demand. You had a singular demand. That you'd measured your back. <laughs> so last night, I'm isolating, uh, currently, and I was reminded that I still had not measured my back. So I got, I got those fresh measurements for you today. Okay, and, and, we, and we found out that I had a 21 to 22 inch back. 
Yep. Um, Eric had a, just a load of bollocks, a load of shit. <laughs> um, and I think Jeff had a similar length back to me. I was so 22 Andrew. inches, yeah. Yeah. I think you guys just have short backs. What was your number, Eric? You're 25, right? Was the report? That's correct. Okay. What a shite. 25. <laughs> so... <laughs> Before I, I give my number for my back measurement, I, I should tell the story of there was a time in the past when I measured my hand to see how big my hand was, and I measured it as 11 inches, and I lived my life for, for quite a while <laughs> thinking I had 11-inch hands. And then I read randomly that Shaq's hands were like 10 and a half inch long. And like, I realized there was a miscalculation when my hands would have been bigger than Shaq's, and I consider my hands smaller than the average hand. How did you uh, get 11 inches? I don't know. I have no... I didn't use, like, a measuring tape or anything. It was, like, a, a, a toy I had that had <laughs> notches on it, and I measured it against that, and I just I thought, like, oh... So you I had an 11 long notch long hand. <laughs> I, that's, yeah. Yeah. I had an 11 notch long hand. So going into these <laughs> measurements, that, that's an important thing to take away. My back. Do we have any guesses how long my back is? Oh no. Well, I mean, you pride yourself on the length of your torso and back, so it's gonna have to be longer than mine and Jeff's. So I'm gonna say twenty-three inches. Twenty-three. Eric is saying thirty-one. Nick guessed twenty-seven. <laughs> Jeff, do you have a guess? And we're guessing in inches, not toy notches. Inches. Yeah, inches. Okay, Proper okay. inches. I used a measuring tape. I did this very. <sighs> professionally and you did to, to that nobule on the on the top of the spine to I, like i did the nobule on the top the of the spine of your back. to like yeah kind of the the, the, the crutch the crux the crux I of the back I, <laughs> crutch i i mean i think no, whatever the try. answer is it's gonna be bullshit but i'm gonna say really? 27 yeah i took this very seriously I, I did it multiple times to make sure i have by my measurements a 26 inch back oh 26 inches. That seems like bullshit. That Do you think that's bullshit? I'm completely I'm, nonsense. Why? What, what makes you say that? How You'll tall say are you? you've got four inches yeah, more back so, than me? Yes, I, I am saying that. Aren't we the same height? Uh, we've talked about this before. I'm all back. I'm a lot of back. Mm -hmm. How so tall I'm, are you? I'm five foot ten. Which so is, you're telling me you're, two, you're <laughs> two inches shorter than me and you have a four inch bigger back. Yes, I am. And let me, That's let me, great. I did some numbers because I was curious. Five foot 10 means I'm, I'm around 70 inches tall. I'm 37% back. <laughs> I got a 37% back. And then that made me think, well, what are my other dimensions? Where am I? So I went from like the rest of my neck to the top of my head. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm 18% neck to top of head. That's the other, the other side. I'm like 12  30, inches. So 30, your head is half your back? Uh, I guess, yeah. Well, no, it's a little little less. Wait, what? <laughs> I got 12 inches from the neck to the top of the head. Okay? How are you 37% back and 18% head? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay out the rest of my figures. Okay. I got all these written down. Right. Let's keep track of this. I'm 18% for 100%. So obviously a person is 100% of whatever. I'm 18%. <laughs> You're lucky. Neck to top of head, 37% back, 17% butt length, 28% legs. <laughs> so, Dad adds so up to saying, 100%. So you're saying you, you got 9% more back than legs? I do, yeah. That's a big 9% though. That's a lot. It's a lot in that 9%. And if you take all of those measurements, because obviously you figured out the percentage from the measurements in inches, have yep. you added together all of those inches? To yes. make up the 70 whatever inches. 100%. Yeah, no, I took this very seriously. Okay. I made sure I made the math work. I'm going to be honest. I had some issues with the math initially. I was a 49% man for a while, and I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. <laughs> Percentages can be difficult. I eventually got the 89%, but I got help. We, we figured it out. We got I mean, there. You're panicking because you can't find your other 11%. Well, no, it's, listen, I got a, Yeah, it was tough. I was like, why am I a 49% man? What oh. has happened? How, what are your legs again? 29? Th what is it? How, my my legs, like? I'm at 28% legs. How's that possible? I'm just 28%. You're less than 30% leg? I'm less than 30% leg, based on my calculations. You're, uh, A, you're an idiot. And B, <laughs> do you think, <laughs> do you think you can eat 
24 inches of pancakes. That seems like a lot. Yeah. Uh, and right now, no, I don't think I could. I don't think I have that in me. So Those the answer to this very long question is... Now, I, I expected I expected some, some kickback on this by you guys. I thought you'd think that my, my measurements were inaccurate. And with the shack hands thing, I think that's fair. I think having some doubts is a reasonable concern. So I reached out to the people that do the animation show that we make, and I wrote down my percentages, oh and my I God. said, without context, could you have somebody draw someone... <laughs> <laughs> with what these percentages, what you interpret they would look like. So we have, I'm, I'm going to post a photo in the chat right now. This is what it looks like based off of that. And I got to say, I think I look pretty good. I think that's me. Okay, to be honest, that is, <laughs> see, that is you. That's pretty close to me. <laughs> I'm so happy. They're so talented, all the people that do the art for a show. As someone who's... Uh, Stood next to you a lot. That is you, except why in the name of Christ? Wait, is that a thumb? Why do you, how many fingers do you have on that hand? What's going on? I want two, three, four. No, yeah, I think that's four. I think the fingers are right. Okay, that's not the, supposed to be me. It's just I said draw no, that's someone. You. That's you. Give these, but it is me. That's how my is point. it not supposed? To, I don't understand how that's not supposed to be you. Because that's you. Well, because I said I said I didn't say draw me. I said these are these figures that I measured. Have somebody draw this without context, just what they what it would look like with these things, and it's me. So it is me, but it isn't me, is what I'm saying. They didn't try to make me. They just took the parts, and it is me, because my measurements are correct. You know what? I'm going to, based on this drawing alone, I'm going <laughs> to accept your measurements until we can be, until we're in person, and can have somebody measure us all next to each other. I can't argue with that, that image of you. That's a great image, though. I just they sent it to me as proportions guy and I love that. That's proportions guy. <laughs> um, so I feel would really you good feel about offended it? if the next time I see you in real life I measure the shit out of you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, because I just need the, I I, obviously I need the real figures. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And as somebody, I, I believe I'm top of back mountain right now, so that's a crown that I respect. It's yeah, was it twenty six? You said. Yeah, twenty six. I can send mm. you my numbers. You can cross reference with your numbers at a future time. But that's uh, just a back update. I know I, I, I let that slip in the past and wanted to make sure I was on top of it. Got my totals done. That is excellent. <laughs> excellent. Excellent closure, <laughs> I think. I totally agree. Yeah. You, thank you for the visual aids. I, uh, another thing in the past that, that we talked about that I feel like we should probably address. Kevin, do you have a nickname? That was homework. We're supposed to come up with nicknames, I believe. Oh, nickname is like a T Bone that we wanted. Yeah, like because yeah. Jeff had T Bone, and I think he he wanted us to come up with nicknames. For yeah, so I'm just like if you want a nickname, now's the time to create. Give yourself one. I think I got one. I I got a great one. I feel really good about mine. Okay, go for it. I was. Uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, I didn't come up with a nickname. My partner gave me this nickname. Uh, I was in bed. <laughs> Nick said, "Back man, <laughs> back man." <laughs> 26 inch back man uh that'd be a great action figure it was just like all back hit the button do stuff anyway um i was in bed i was relaxing uh and they walked into the room and i had my icing on my head as i do just having a, a good, good cool. relaxing time yeah. and uh they said oh no do you have a headache and then i explained no this is just a thing i'm now doing for leisure this is just comfortable <laughs> And uh, they've started calling me Frosty because it's like frosting. <laughs> oh. So uh, that's my new nickname. I'm just, I'm Frosty now. It's okay. a great nickname. Frosty Panton? Frosty Panton. I didn't even associate the last name with the first, but I feel really good about Frosty. It happened like the day after we had that recording and I was like, holy shit, it's perfect. Frosty. Uh, Gavin, uh, how are you doing on your nickname search? Um, I couldn't really think of anything. And then I just, something came into my head uh, that, I like, and it's Ram Scoop. <laughs> okay. Okay. So is it like one name Ram Scoop, or is it like first Ram, last Scoop? Like what is, uh, what's the thought? No, it'd just be one name Ram Scoop. Okay. And, and, it, and it's Why? because I remembered, I, I think I had Red Dwarf in my head. This is the ship from Red Dwarf, and that okay. bit on the front is the Ram Scoop, and I just thought, <laughs> that's a good name. Oh, I like it. Jeff, you don't think he's kind of like walking into your name territory with like oh because the, the R.A.M. Ramsey? thing? Yeah, nah, it's fine. Oh mm. shit, I didn't even. Think I'm, of that. I'm okay with that. Really, you didn't think of that? That's the first thing I thought of. 
Oh, you know what, Jeff? If you if you want to take Ram Scoop, I'll give it up. No, no, I'm happy with T Bone. I have I got T Bone, and I've only ever seen one episode of Red Dwarf, so it would be disingenuous of me. Okay, I'm. I think Ram Scoop. You name. You, that's the thing. You name yourself whatever you want. This is when yeah. carte blanche here. We don't have to wait to be gifted to us. Like, uh, and you end up with some dumbass nickname. Like they called me Jeff Rowe in sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it then. That's why I'm T Bone now. <laughs> Honestly, Ram Scoop has supporting character energy to it. Like I could see mm. T Bone and Ram Scoop working together. Yeah, I I would always be after the end. I think no yeah. one's ever starting with Ram Scoop, and that's I <laughs> no. think that's a place I'm happy to be. <laughs> like Frosty T Bone and Ram Scoop. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Like this would be like Frosty would it like bring you into his <sighs> gang, and he'd be like, "This is T Bone, and this is Ram Scoop." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like if it was like a TV series and those are the three main characters, you would have the first two names memorized by the end of episode like one and two. But it'd take you till like episode four to remember Ram Scoop. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picture us as the supporting cast of Hot Rod. <laughs> I can see that. Just like Danny oh, Bryan and everybody just sit, yeah, just sitting around. Bill Hader just talking about how we love the party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a video if we want to. Watch a little oh, video together. Yeah. I would love to watch video. I'll give the backstory. Um, okay. This is from a YouTube channel called uh, Geo Wizard, where he does a lot of stuff like he'll try and walk across the country in a straight line, which is really funny. And uh, I've talked about it before on podcasts. It's just a good channel. And he does GeoGuessr as well. So pretty much every time he does like a straight line mission across the country, I'll also watch some other videos. And this is called Time Guesser, I guess. So it's, it's similar to GeoGuessr, but you just get a picture that's not necessarily a historical picture. It's just you have to use the context clues to figure out where exactly it is on the map and mm. then what year it is. So I think that currently he's, he's looking at this sign and he's seen Monroe, so he thinks it's potentially in Monroe, Louisiana. And then we'll just watch this clip together. Yeah. We don't you hear actually it? have anything, yeah. do we? The chances of these things still going is ridiculous. And there is a Navy oh. sailor. I didn't notice him. Ah... Uh... I don't think they're coming up here, man. So I don't think this is going to be right, but I'm going to go for it. Let's just go in the middle of there. And now for the year, well, 45. Wait a minute. Key West. I don't believe it. <gasps> is this Key West? Oh, God, good riddance, Monroe. See you later. Key West. It's got to be Key West. That makes more sense as well. Navy. That, but it's got to be a Sloppy Navy Joe's? Yeah, that's a very strategic place. Dude. Across the street from Sloppy Joe's. It looks so. like Sloppy Joe's to me, that Duval outside. Duval Street. Let's look at the shadows here. The shadows. The sun will be definitely in the south here. And the shadows come from there. So This guy's like a scientist. I would put us on something like this. I'm not even going to look for any of these. Okay, did you see where he clicked? No. Can you see this? I mean, it's a little blown out it's for us. It's a little, little blown out, but yeah, what? <laughs> he clicked in the intersection right next to Sloppy Joe's. He clicked exactly where the cameras are pointing on the live stream. Whoa! What are the freaking chances of that? It turns out um, it's the right street. The picture is just slightly further down. Mm. But I... I spat my drink out when I saw where he clicked <laughs> and it was literally where we watch. It was like Dude. the day, it was like a week after we did that <laughs> Sloppy Joe's bingo. He was, uh, yeah, about half a kilometer off in where Can it was actually taken. And he, and he wow. clicked in the intersection. That is fucking insane. And I have a, I have a one, a little piece of Sloppy Joe's uh, trivia that I could throw out uh, to add color to this, if you'd like. Uh, yes. I was reading on the Sloppy Joe's wiki uh, while I was on vacation uh, about the origin of the Sloppy Joe. And listen to this passage. One theory of the sandwich's origin is that in 1917, in a Havana, Cuba bar, owner Jose Sloppy Joe Abayel uh, E. Otero created a simple sandwich filled with meat and stewed tomatoes. It was his interpretation of a picadillo. Uh, his bar was reportedly frequented by Americans and Britons, in Britons, including Ernest Hemingway, obviously, Graham Greene, who's a fantastic writer, if you've never read any of his work, and Errol Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> 
His bar was reportedly frequented by Americans and Britons, including Errol Flynn, Ernest Hemingway, and Graham <laughs> Greene, circa 1937. What is happening? Hemingway then convinced the key... Uh, convince him to move to Key West, Florida or whatever. Dude, Errol fucking Flynn, who only Crazy. exists in our universe because you said the name because you <laughs> called yourself Errol, went to fucking Sloppy Joe's with Ernest Hemingway. And it's not like he just went there and no one noticed. He's like notably someone who went there to the point yeah. that it was written and recorded. And yeah. Then, yeah, and then I watch a YouTube channel where someone incorrectly guesses right outside Sloppy Joe's. It's Everything's happening at the same time. It's crazy. There's it been- is so fucking a lot bizarre. of great sloppy joe's stuff recently jeff are you are you aware of their independence day are you familiar with the conch republic yeah i'm familiar with the conch republic i had no idea that was thing so jeff you went on vacation to italy you went on vacation during their independence day week which i, I thought know, was i know terrible timing for sloppy joe's stuff so i've been trying to watch it. i didn't know anything about it Gavin, are you aware of the conch republic no they set up I don't remember when this was maybe like the 70s. It was the 80s, I think. Early 80s. 80s. Yeah. Okay. They randomly, the government set up a checkpoint on the one highway out of town, like right in the center of their, their area, essentially. So you had to clear the security checkpoint to leave the keys. And it was killing tourism. And so they're trying to get it removed and they wouldn't remove it. They were ignoring all requests. So the mayor of Key West uh, essentially gathered people and got everybody to agree to defect from the u.s and to call themselves the conch republic and they uh, started war they immediately declared war against the united states and then surrendered but it was just all like a publicity stunt yeah. to try to get media attention on the fact that they wouldn't get rid of this checkpoint that was killing their their town essentially um and it worked but now every year they celebrate the the like independence day of from america of the conch republic and they do like a whole week tourism shit, and it's great. So how long were they technically two at weeks. war? I think two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. They, they, they seceded from the Union for like two weeks. Wow, it was very quite, brief. Quite a long time. Yeah, and, and, and that's why they call themselves the Conquer Republic now, and it's a great marketing tool, and it it's really worked out really well for them. So what do you need to be able to um, declare war on the country that you're in? Just I, enough yeah, people? I guess, yeah. I guess if everyone agrees, and the people in power, you then remove and attack interesting there was like some issue i want to say where like there was a rally for it and somebody hit a naval officer with a thing of like dried bread (laughs) and so like the declaration of war was almost like a panic move to like calm the crowd to then immediately surrender was the (laughs) idea um (laughs) at least from my understanding of it this is crazy i had no idea that was the thing there was a parade going on i was like what is happening what are they celebrating how is jeff missing this (laughs) <laughs> also, I need to send a file. I've been uh, recording some clips from Sloppy Joe's. I had one of the greatest arguments I've ever seen of 20 minutes, a 20 minute long. It's the most compelling television I've ever watched of a uh, wedding gone wrong. <gasps> oh, of like, dude. was it was it close to slop o'clock? It was. Yeah, it was. Uh, what time? It would have been like 1245 Eastern, which I feel like, Jeff, is that that kind of like prime oh, slop o'clock? 11, 11, 15 is when slop o'clock starts. So, yeah, you're right in there. Okay, well, it was, it was like prime slop clock, and honestly, it was kind of quiet, and it was disappointing, and I was like, oh, man, I, this is, I'm surprised that with uh, the independence festivities and all that stuff, like, this isn't a rowdier time, and then just out of nowhere, just hearing somebody say, I don't know what you're fucking talking about, <laughs> and then a guy going, you crossed the line, there's a line, and you crossed it, and then it just kept going, and she's like, you're gonna ruin Kyle's wedding. And she, he's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You crossed the line. The line was crossed. I am going to stay here and I'm going to fight this guy. And, and they're, they're just hearing like, you, we are not going to get arrested in Key West. And it kept building. And then eventually the groom shows up and like tried to come. And it just kept escalating. And it was crazy. Yeah, it was fantastic. I need to send you footage jeff i can send it to you if you want it gavin as well it's an all-time oh, argument yeah. at some time or at some point in it somebody yells this isn't game of thrones it's great <laughs> it's a fantastic <laughs> fight and it's been oh, honestly man. the high of maybe like any entertainment i've watched this year was the sloppy joe's live stream should we do a live sloppy joe's bingo soon yeah i i, I actually great. have a date that i want to pitch to you guys after this record i'm not doing it okay sure. I'm talk about it yeah afterward. yes good it's move. good <laughs> yeah, but there's there's some stuff in the works, Gav, so that we can hopefully do do one before too long. It, actually, pretty pretty, not not yeah, pretty soon. 
Um, when this comes out, pretty soon. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So I'm ho- hopefully everybody's available because I'm very very excited about it. Man, I gotta say, uh, going to Italy for eleven days was awesome, and I had a wonderful mm-hmm. vacation. Uh, and if the souvenir of my eleven days in Italy was COVID, it was worth <laughs> it. It was. Uh, it was. I got. Man, I got to see a lot of churches. Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, but I tried to keep tabs on Sloppy Joe's, and it was so hard. I it, 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 every, fucking NBA was brutal. All the playoff games mm. started at two in the morning, Ugh. and so I'd have to watch from two in the morning to four in the morning or four thirty in the morning. <laughs> and then, you know, then the Celtics would shit the bed, and then because it was like on a tour I was on that was sometimes on a bus, sometimes on a train, sometimes in a car. Uh, every morning we had to have our bags ready and outside of our room by like six fifteen in the morning, and then we were leaving at like seven. So I didn't I didn't sleep for like ten straight days. Speaking of the Celtics, how are your uh, Italy shits? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't. Well, I learned uh, we I learned interestingly enough uh, that uh, I thought I liked Italian food. Turns out I like um I like uh, like American Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking my shits were fine. Uh, my shits were totally fine, unremarkable. Um, okay. The the bidets are weird over there, so I tended not to use them. They're like what's weird scary. about? Them? Uh, they usually like they're yeah like on on a like a a handle on a fucking cord that you got to maneuver yourself. I like that my bidet does all the work. I don't want to like <laughs> start spraying and fucking miss. I it just it was confusing. <laughs> Uh, it was more trouble than it was worth. And I ended up making a bigger mess than uh, I, any any mess with the bidet is unacceptable. Have you used one that's like a separate appliance? The one yeah. that you like get off and squat over? Yeah, I don't like that one either. Okay. Uh, I wasn't crazy about that one either. Um, so it was a pretty, you know, I had, I had to wipe my butthole like a savage. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, it's like all the food in Italy, it's like, do you like spaghetti? Then you'll love it with clams. It's like, oh, but I don't want clams. And they're like, tough shit. Clams are in everything. Do you, do you like ravioli? Sure. Then you're going to love clam ravioli. <laughs> How do you feel about clam lasagna? Do you like tiramisu? You're going to love clam tiramisu. God damn with the clams, man. <laughs> they got a lot of coastline. They really do. Uh, the food was pretty good. Uh, you realize that like you don't understand what al dente in America is. Al dente is a, is a whole different level in <laughs> But it was good. The food, the food was, was mostly good. Did you feel like you had different morning thoughts in a different country than what you <sighs> I did? I, my, my morning thoughts were, I, I kind of gave up on them because I was mm. so stressed. Because I was like, I was like waking up two or three times. You know, it's like I, was, <laughs> yeah. I didn't go to bed till like 4.30 after the Celtics lose or whatever. And then I'm asleep for like 45 minutes. And then I got to get up and figure out what toiletries I need to set aside in a backpack so I can get my suitcases packed to put them outside the door and then go back to sleep for 30 minutes. To, it's just like it was unproductive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really... I have morning thoughts from before and after, but uh, I did... I do have... Uh, I have two stories I'd like to share from Italy that I think will kind of encompass oh, my trip. Okay. So and, and I'll say from... I, just for the, for the record, I went to Lake Como. I went to uh, Venice. I went to Florence. I went to Siena. And I went to Rome. And Rome is by far the coolest place I've ever been, probably. Uh, and I could, and I'd, I'd be happy never to go to Venice again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's too many fucking people, man. It's just gross. Uh, okay. So I had two things that happened in Italy that I thought you guys might appreciate. Uh, one was, uh, I had, I, I developed an enemy on the trip. <laughs> and I didn't realize how much I need an enemy in my life at all times. Uh, but when there isn't one, I found I I, I boy do I find them. Uh, so we were on this trip. It was like twenty two people, right? And it was like a trip that Emily's parents planned before the pandemic. And we, we were supposed to go in twenty twenty, um, and so it's been delayed and delayed and delayed. And so everybody that had initially got tickets all just got even older. Uh, Emily and I and her sister in law were the only people under sixty on the trip. So. <laughs> It, everybody was between like 65 and like 80. Uh, the kind of people was, that would be impatient waiting for a proposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. And so like, it, uh, so I spent, I, I spent the last 11 days moving at the speed of octogenarian, which was uh, <laughs> a whole special kind of challenge in general. Uh, but um, all lovely people, love them to death. But so it's a really intimate trip, right? We we comprised five of twenty two people, so there were only seventeen other people on the trip with us, right? 
And so you get to know each other very quickly. And they have a lot of like the first night you have you get together in a little in a hotel conference room kind of and you have to introduce yourselves and tell oh, them God. about your life. And shit, you would hate it. I also oh, hate God, it. that sounds but, awful. But I, you know, I just I made a dumb joke about like about marrying up or something. And I, you know, I I was just trying to lighten the mood. And uh but anyway, I was affable, and you get to know everybody's face instantly because there's only like 17 other people that you don't know there. So you learn them immediately. Uh, and then you like, then we went on a fucking tour together. We went on a boat all across Lake Como, went to all these fucking restaurants together. We have to like mix and match. So we're sitting at each other's tables, and you're like, it's like immersion. You have to, you're, you're immersed in these other people's lives, and you get to know them very quickly. So I'm, on day four of this trip, day four, we're going from uh, Venice down to Florence, and we stop at a winery in, in Tuscany somewhere that's also like a, like a fancy fucking hotel. Like, we pull into the driveway, and there's, uh, there's uh, two Aston Martins and a Ferrari parked in the, in the driveway, and you're like, holy shit, this, this, is, this, this place is fancy. And then y- y- we eat outside and have this, like, lunch with wine that I can't drink, and so they're just, like, confused and offended that I don't want their wine from their winery, and then I feel like an asshole, and I'm trying to be like, no, I'm just, I, I'll destroy the place if I drink, please don't, you know? Uh, and uh, anyway, I get up and I go to the bathroom, and me and all the old ladies get up and go to the bathroom because we all have to pee constantly. And, uh, and I'm standing in line with this group of ladies that I have been on tour. I just, I've been on a bus with for four hours, just like having to play bingo together. We played Italy bingo. Uh, we had just played that day <laughs> all together. Uh, like fucking, like fucking forced to play bingo about Italy. And, uh, oh, by the way, Sloppy Jesus bingo, way better. And, uh, and I'm standing in line with this lady and there's one of the ladies on the trip and she turns back and she looks at me and she goes, so are you staying at the winery? And I go, why would I do that? And she goes, no, I mean, because the winery had, was like a hotel as well. And there was like a pool with like f- fancy fucking Italian people uh, hanging out by the pool and stuff. And she goes, no, I mean, are you a resident of this hotel? Are you staying here? And I go, what are you talking about? And she goes, are, are you staying at this hotel? And I go, <laughs> lady, I've been on a bus with you for four days. And she goes, what? And I go, we're on the tour together. We've been, we sat by each other. And she just looked at me with just like disdain in her eyes. And she goes, you must be one of the family then. And just walked away as if like the fet, like we're like, a, we and I, so I was like, oh, it is fucking on between you and me, lady. So she was my fucking enemy for the next eight days. And I hated her every second. And I was still nice to her and I was still polite to her, but I was a little less nice and a little less sincere every time I said something to her. Wow. Were you offended that she didn't know though? I'm the only person under 80 on the fucking bus. <laughs> I got covered in tattoos and I'm loud as dicks. How could she have not noticed me? We were together for four days. I sat next to her on a speedboat. <laughs> I helped her get off the speedboat. I held her dumb hand. You, wow. You helped her. That's a so, bond. Anytime you're riding with someone in a speedboat, that is, that is a genuine bond you have formed. Yeah. I can't believe that she... That's disrespectful. I point. totally agree, dude. And so, uh, so from that point on, I realized uh, that trip got instantly better because I realized I hated her. <laughs> and then there's just something clicked, and it was like, oh, this, I, I need this tension in my life. I gotta have something to be mad about, you know, or something to, some some focus. I mean, that's clearly a thing, though. Like, do they all know about the family? Is it like all of them versus I, you, or is it just her? I? I wondered that as well. Well, she was on a trip with uh, her cousins. Uh, and they were lovely, and I had many nice conversations with them. So if there was, so I don't think so. I don't know. I think it was just her dumbass. But uh, yeah, not a fan. Not a fan of her. Not a fan. Where, of her. where was she from? I don't want to say. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she was in right. the U.S. She was the Northeast. She was from the Northeast. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Mm. I don't want to yeah. <laughs> get too identifiable with her. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like having a first aid kit but not keeping it stocked up. Most of the time you'll probably be fine, but what if suddenly you get into a horrible accident and there's nothing in your first aid kit to help you stop the bleeding? That's interesting. I was, I view, I, I've never had, I had an earthquake, like an emergency kit in school, but I've never had a proper first aid kit. I assumed it was just like band-aids and stuff. I never thought it'd be used in like a serious emergency, but I guess that makes sense. I just never considered it. Anyway, 
Why you need a VPN is that every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafe, hotels, airports, any hacker on that same network can gain access to your personal data, passwords, financial details, etc. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed. A smart 12-year-old could do it. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. Now, what's great about ExpressVPN is that they have an encrypted tunnel. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. Hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It's super secure. It'd take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. It's easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. It works on all your devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so you can stay secure on the go. I love ExpressVPN as well because you can use it to access other countries' content libraries. It's awesome for that, as well as sometimes being able to watch events. Like, I love the Spelling Bee. It's coming up soon. I don't know if it'll once again only be available in America or at least not available in Canada, so have to boot up ExpressVPN and be able to watch it because it's one of my favorite events of the year. So to secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash face, that's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash face, and you can get an extra three months free via expressvpn.com slash face. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. From childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions, Shady Rays is making a lasting impact on their lives through sunglasses. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving up their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code FACE for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code FACE for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Hey everyone, we wanted to take a moment to remind you that RTX 2023 is happening this July 7th through July 9th. RTX is our favorite time of year where we get to interact with all the amazing people that give us the opportunity to make content. It's a celebration of all things Rooster Teeth with panels, special guests, community artists, cosplay, and more. There'll be exclusive reveals, meet and greets with Rooster Teeth talent, and special merch available only during the event. We're changing up how the convention feels this year, and it's going to be awesome. Imagine a mini Epcot-style convention show floor with different attractions and activations from your favorite Rooster Teeth brands all wrapped up in a summer camp theme. It's the summer camp for indoor kids with Face Jam's Rat and Grackle Pub, a Red Web Escape Room, a f Face Museum, a Cheeman Hunter Mini Golf, and even more cool stuff to do that we're saving for attendees to experience. Thanks for listening to us get very excited about RTX. We're looking forward to meeting you all there, so head on over to www.rtxaustin.com to get more information about the event and buy your badge. One other story I have. Uh, we were at Lake, we were at Lake Como. We got there a day early. And so we stayed at this really nice hotel that had a fancy spa that they had just reopened. And it had like all of these different kind of like spa treatments you could try. Like there was this like room you walk in and you walk through ice cold water that's like up to your ankles or like a little above your ankles. And then you go into like hot water and then ice cold water and then hot water. And you like follow this Zen path and shit. And then there's like, there's a room full of ice that you just go in and freeze in for five minutes. Then you go get into a hot room and there's a room where you like dump buckets of hot or cold water on your head. Just all kinds of weird shit. Right. And so Emily and I are just going through and doing it all. And then after we go through all the gimmicks, we're like, do you want to just hang out in the spa or in the sauna? And we're like, yeah, let's just get in a nice hot sauna and just fucking sweat out all the gross us and just fucking just relax. And so we get in the sauna and 
it's not super hot yet. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So I like click the on button to like flip it on and the lights come on. And I'm like, all right, it's going to start heating up now. And so we like lay down and get comfy and we're just laying there and it's okay, but it's like, it's like the least impressive sauna I've ever been in. And I'm just thinking about like why they would have such a mediocre sauna in such a nice hotel with all this other, <laughs> sa- all this other gimmicky shit. Right. And as we're laying there, we're just kind of like talking we both realize that we can hear this like somewhere off in the distance, this alarm going off. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, uh, somebody's day is ruined. And it just keeps going on. And on and we're like, man, I hope, I hope this isn't like the end of the world or something. And like, this is how we fought like 28 days later. This is how we find <laughs> out, you know, and it just keeps going forever. And so we're kind of joking about it because it's been going on for like five minutes. And then the front door swings open and some dude runs in and he goes, is everybody okay? Are you okay? And we're like, yeah, man, what's up? And he's like, Oh, you hit the alarm button. We we just, just making sure everything's okay. And he went and he turned off the alarm button, and then the sauna turned on. <laughs> we got in, and I just immediately pulled the alarm. <laughs> the fucking power. And we were sitting in a fucking in a cold ass sauna, not working because it was shut down while there was an f- alarm blaring around the entire. <laughs> And we couldn't hear it because we were in the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> but so you didn't notice everything turn off the second you press that? Yeah, the second you pressed that, it got started. It got dim and hot, and we're like, "Oh, this feels more right." <laughs> I, I was it. So where was the button? And re- was it in the sauna? Was it outside? What is? No, it was in the sauna, just on the wall. Really? That I feel yeah. like once again, sort on them. I feel like there should be more of a sign. <laughs> How is it not marked with a huge sign? Yeah, how does that not constantly happen? I don't know, I don't speak Italian. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the color scheme usually, or like an exclamation mark or something. I didn't, I didn't notice it, I just saw like, I just saw like a thing to flip. I was like, yeah, this must be it. I wonder how often that happens, like does that guy just have to sprint across the hotel like every three days? I mean, by, the, by his reaction, it sounds like it hardly ever happens. Yeah. Otherwise he would have just strolled in casually. He looked stressed out. <laughs> And then, 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 then immediately, like he hated me, which I get. Oh, he's been talking to the other lady, probably. Oh my god, that is. Anyway, so, so that's uh, that's my Italy trip. Other than, oh, I love it. Then Ugh. let me tell you something. I saw all the greatest works of art and all uh, anything you can think of. I saw, and I got to see like private tours of it. I got to see a private tour of the Sistine Chapel. It was amazing. I got to see all this stuff, and all I've discovered is. Man, are there a lot of pictures, a lot of paintings of Mary and the baby Jesus. Why didn't they paint anything else? Like babies for steps? Like surely it was a big deal when Jesus learned to walk, right? Or like first time he had solid food? Or like Jesus playing ball in the yard? Or like anything else? There are entire cities devoted to pictures of the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus at the manger or like the day after when they have their first like mommy son photo. But like nothing else. <laughs> I just like it's insane. Yeah, like why aren't more presidential portraits of them like having lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just why or that you- moment? <laughs> like so much else happened in that dude's life they could have drawn pictures of. And we're talking like <laughs> old like art type to every, Yeah, dude, it, every museum you go to and you're like you're like as the as a Virgin Mary was a baby Jesus and over here is a <laughs> baby Jesus with the Virgin Mary. I thought you said you didn't speak here. Italian. And, yeah, yeah and it's just like you, back to back doing? to back. Well, you know, it's I I, I live there, man, for ten days. It, it, I live there. Me, yeah. I, well, I mean, visiting you, live, you are a I'm resident. I'm practically Italian now. Hmm. Do you think they they realized what they were doing, or do you think they were all being original? Like these were all made independently, and then they had the big art show, and they went, "Oh no!" They all got oh, together. It's like, oh, oh did, no! You should have told me you were also drawing <laughs> yeah, Mary yeah, Jesus exactly. at there. I just feel like if like if like they got all the Harry Potter fans got together and they all only drew the the picture off the first book and they're like there's seven other books of shit you could draw from as yeah I don't know that's funny I think that's a great analogy though because I wasn't really on board I thought I'm like I don't know it's like church commissioned and it's just pictures of baby Jesus 
But when you said Harry Potter all from the first book. <laughs> well, you think about it, it's like fandom, right? It's like it was the best story around back at the time. It was like right. Game of Thrones of of the the BC eighties, right? It was like mm-hmm. it was like the shit that was happening that everybody was invested in. All the fan fiction was about it. Everybody's writing uh <laughs> you know, that people are all the shipping, everything is all about it. And it just like continued for so, so long. Like the staying power is phenomenal. For thousands of years, they were still drawn. They're still drawn pictures, uh, and and doing that shit. But it's just all of that same fucking scene. It's like so much else happened. Jesus was oh. in his thirties. Like what? What? I, why did Jesus eating lunch when he's fifteen at school? <laughs> like where's that picture? Like why didn't somebody paint that? Like Jesus hanging out with his friends in the backyard. Like. <laughs> Having a horse race, or having a donkey race with his buddy Craig, or like anything, you know. Sure, I'm just thinking of a subgenre of like fan fiction around Jesus and like other. I never consider that like non-ironic, like Jesus fanfic and media. That's what I would consider the Bible to be. It was written like 300 years sure. after he died. I just, I mean, more in the context of like this is Twilight, but Jesus is there. Like the idea of like <laughs> wanting to implement. X-Men, well, te- but Jesus. <laughs> Technically, Andrew, I think Jesus is in all of the stories. He's oh, in all of us. I see. It's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was my big takeaway. I got to see stuff that was like, dude, Rome was fucking awesome. You get to go see stuff that you're like, you're like, oh, the Colosseums? Yeah, that's 3,000 years older than Jesus. And you're like, holy shit, <laughs> that's fucking old. And it's still there, and you can still walk around it. And, uh, and you just think about like, how much shit must have happened? How many interesting things must have happened? And then you go to all the museums and they tell you about four different, you know, four different dudes or events. And you're just like, mm-hmm. man. And even then you just get like the small snapshot. Yeah. When you had your rivalry with that woman, did you do anything small but petty that gave you joy? Did you have like a small moment? Yeah. Like well, quiet, fuck you. So like anytime I would smile at her or wave <laughs> or like open the door for her or anything, I just would, on the inside, I'd be a little less sincere about it. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't think she picked up on it. And that's, <laughs> I, that's, I was such a subtle, like, it was for me internally. I'm not going to be rude to a, a lady, a, an older uh, lady, uh, <laughs> externally, of course, but it was on the inside. I was just like, I mean, I mean it like 60%. Of, of I like the idea of you yeah. doing something in real life, like a little bit of a smile, like raised eyebrows. <laughs> but in your head, it's just like a furrowed brow and <laughs> oh, <yeah>. slightly <laughs> closed mouth. Exactly. I'm like, and on the inside, I'm like, I hope you don't have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see this shit? I the did. Corridor crew did the Jason Bourne vanishing trick. I think that was like a week after our episode came out. Oh, that's just a, it's just more of our simulation breaking down, and everything's <laughs> that's so- everything's just a coincidence. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I guarantee it's a coincidence because I doubt they heard it and then put a video together that. <laughs> no, no. I read some I read some comments that people Gavin was on some of their videos one time and clearly <laughs> Gavin set this up. So, Gavin, you're you're here. You can come clean. You can let everyone know that you did this. I mean, I'm friends with Ren. I like Ren. Apparently, his wife uh, listens to face, which is nice. Oh, um, see, there you uh, go. Uh, just, so just uh, admit it. But so simply admit it, Gavin. Out. Nope. Nothing to do with me at all. I actually I heard quizzes. rumors that Gavin was inside the van that the guy was jumping wow. into. Wow. <laughs> okay, true or false? Wow. Definitely false. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't watched the video yet. How, how is it? I haven't watched it yet either. I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> just saw the it's just going to be them doing a way better job of it than we're going to yeah, do. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Undeniable. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I like those. Uh, co- I don't know them personally, uh, but I, I like their content. So, and we've always yeah, like run in similar circles. Yeah. Ren is like one of my favorite people online. Just like totally like the most, one of the most enthusiastic people you'll ever meet. That's awesome. Jeff, I have a, a sports move. I want to run by you since you're a sports influencer. I had an idea. I had a great, I think, petty idea that I'm very proud of. I didn't initiate on, but uh, the NHL draft lottery happened a few days ago. And there was a, a like a really good player was is expected to go in this upcoming draft, and the Chicago Blackhawks won. And I fucking hate the Blackhawks. They're terrible, mm-hmm. awful organization. Can't stand them. Just the worst in so many ways. Jeez. And I I was reading a news story, like an hour after it happened, that they had sold like two point five million dollars in season tickets, like an hour after they had won the lottery to get this player. I think a great move 
and I, I hadn't ever thought about this before. I don't know if it's possible. I didn't look into the logistics of it fully. I did try, but the site was down. Um, I think a great move would be to buy season tickets for teams you hate and then sell them back to the fans at an above average price. If the demand allows it like that's a thing I'm going to be actively looking to do. Well, like scalping know. for shitty teams? Sort of, yeah, but like buying season... I never considered buying season tickets. Yeah, but it's not scalping, is well, it? Well, no, because I'm buying the tickets from the team, but then just never going to the games. Oh. I'm only selling them. And so, therefore, fans of that team would then have to pay me to see their team. And I feel like in a weird way that I'm getting like a one-up on, on the fans of that you team. Just, you added a, a, a moral quandary to just scalping. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you've just you've somehow put s- sports anger into like the secondary market. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not really sure what it accomplishes. This is what it accomplishes. I, I guess. Would you sell the tickets for more or less than what? Oh, more. Okay, so absolutely you're just more scal- than what I paid for. Well, no, is, but is, no. Is, hear me out. Hear, well, hear me out. I lost my team lost the draft lottery. I'm really mad about it. But now fans of the Blackhawks have to pay a tax to me, a guy that hates their organization. I'm profiting off of their fandom. And that makes me feel okay about losing the draft. Mm-hmm. Now, now that we now that you put it out put it like that, I, I'm pretty sure it is scalping. Uh, <laughs> how did he put it the first time what if you well because I, I was thinking like before the pandemic i was seriously considering buying a season ticket block to the celtics figuring i i could travel to seven or eight games and then anyone that i couldn't make i'd just sell uh on like uh yeah you're allowed to do that uh-huh. yeah, yeah why wouldn't that be absolutely oh, yeah i do that i have season tickets to austin fc and i sell the tickets that i can't go to the games too yeah but okay. I would be buying them with the intention of going to most or all of them. And then if circumstances change, I have the, you know, the safety valve of being able to sell them, hopefully for an increased rate. Uh, it seems like it'd be a funnier gotcha if you could figure out a way to sell those tickets, but only tell them to people that hate the Blackhawks who are then going to yeah. oh. be, you know, That's, like extroverted like sell them to and, the away and team. nuisances. Yeah, like, like maybe sell them at a discount to the away team. That is the extension of that. If you were a James Bond like billionaire villain, the move would definitely be to buy as many season tickets as you could and then either just not go or send opposing fans to every home game. Yeah. <laughs> oh. the, the company still makes all the money though. Yeah, but like it's about you. It's about oh, you're yeah. lying to yourself to make you feel better about your sports situation. Interesting. None of it is logical. Like that's the first thing you gotta get rid of when assessing. Yeah, any I, th- of these I think that works way better on a on a grander scale. Like if you buy a whole block, is because it wouldn't even to, to be clear. Like I couldn't if they're selling above what I bought them for. That's because of demand for market that demand. Team. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not me. I'm not. I'm not purposely bumping because if I did, then people just wouldn't buy them. But if market demand caters, which it generally does, when there's excitement around like a team that has potential i just think it's a great penny move is there a team that you would do this with gavin do you have like a sports hate for someone oh arsenal yeah oh okay (laughs) well there you go no hesitation well i mean every team's got a rival yep imagine if you were more successful in life than you currently are yeah and you were able to uh there's like the big uh premier league cup it's between uh arsenal (laughs) and tottenham and you were able to, and it's a hundred thousand person stadium, and you were able to buy fifty thousand <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal fan seats, and then just leave it empty, and it's just fifty thousand yeah. Tottenham fans, and then just fucking cricket. And then, and then when the Arsenal other side. inevitably beat Spurs, it's just complete silence for every goal. <laughs> <laughs> Booing. Because there's actually like I've been to games where. The the away turnout was so low that you could barely hear anyone over there, and it's not like. Everyone boos when a goal is scored. It's just quiet. Like people just mainly get quiet, and it's a really funny sight to like hear the ball hit the net <laughs> in a big stadium, and just people like you can hear the players going, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great if Arsenal would play." <laughs> See, now you're on board. You're loving this fantasy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm back on board. <laughs> Could I talk to you about the problem I'm having at the moment? Please. 
and I've 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 talked in the Slack about this, but you know, as you know, I'm I'm hounded by slightly weird house problems a lot of the time. Um, I've had my uh, carpet mushrooms and my sink mushrooms constant battle. Um, and you know, now I've got my slime. <laughs> slime? I mean, my slime face, the slime era. What is oh this? Oh my god! What is what is this <laughs> shit? Where is this that coming is, from? That is, you got the Last of Us season two starting in your house. Is what you have. Yeah, that, I don't want to touch it. Good. That shouldn't. Is it slimy? It looks like mold or oh, like fungus. Yeah, yeah it's like it's, it's like seed. translucent goo. You're gonna oh. end up like Stephen King and Creep Show if you talk touch that. Do not touch that. Yeah, don't it. touch the meteor shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what to do about this. This is probably one for the audience to help out with. What What am I doing with this slime? How it, I would hmm, have you tried power washing it? I would try power washing it. That'd be my first phase, I think. Uh, well, yeah, I could I could wash it off, but isn't it isn't it more interesting to see how big the slime gets? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I'm just if you wanna. Oh, I didn't. I thought we were I looking for realize, solutions. I didn't realize that's what we were doing with this. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you I mean? was I was looking up solutions. What it could yeah, possibly be. I, things to make it go away. <laughs> I didn't realize that we were in a. Well, let's see what this thing is. Yeah, and see how far it can go. <laughs> when, situation. When Jeff was in his crotch rot phase, he didn't say, I wonder how far this will go. Let's just, just wait and see. Well, I, I don't have slime growing on my balls. I mean, it's not like, I don't think it's that urgent. <laughs> it's growing on your I balls. I mean, but you don't know what it is. You don't know how urgent it is. To me, this is how, um, like, the original Super Mario Bros. movie, this is how, like, the Koopa world started. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's a slimy place, isn't it? Everything's like covered in goo in there. Dennis <laughs> sure. Hopper's like living in slime world. So you think like if they do a zoom out, it would just be the like in Men in Black where they keep zooming out? No, or I'm whatever. not saying like, that this is a tiny city. I'm saying that this is the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, where it started. Have you checked on it recently? Is this a current photo? Oh, this is about two weeks ago. I haven't looked at it for a while. What? That's oh my two god! Weeks go look ago? at it. You go go been... run out and look at it right now. Yeah, <laughs> you've been keeping what? tabs on this. Uh, I can go. I'll go right now. Okay. Yeah, go. Are you gonna take a picture? Yeah, yeah take right a picture. Back. Okay. I don't. I don't <laughs> understand. Nick says it may already be too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, in another three weeks, it's gonna be too hot in Texas for anything to survive. Yeah. And the the fucking sun will kill it. But I was it? really like looking up. I'm like, oh, I wonder what yeah. this could be. I'm searching like outdoor slime, fungus growing on house. I'm like doing searches. What are the best ways out? And Gavin's like, no, I want to see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, let's see. It's fucking I got a, gross. I got a problem here, Doc. <laughs> let's see what happens. You want to treat? Nah, let's just, let's play it out. Let's see oh, what's going man. on. If that was growing on my house, I would be taking care of it already. <laughs> yes. There's, I wouldn't not be taking care of it. Wow. I mean, if, if it starts heating up, you should cut that section of his wall off to preserve it inside. We got to see where this goes. That's right. You got to remove course. the wall. Of course. Clearly. Obviously. How are you guys feeling, by the way? Uh, Tired. Uh, but like, yeah. Happy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, my <laughs> God. I feel oh. not good. Uh, is oh. that bigger? I can't tell. Uh, hold no. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, I'd it say it is. About the same. I think it looks a lot darker. I think it's uh, more established. It uh, looks more evil at the bottom. At the, yeah, the bottom's yeah, a lot more does. evil. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you can see the darkness spreading. This is how strange... This is season one of Stranger Things. Oh, it's like to the upside down? Yeah. It's huh. definitely getting... It looks like it's eating away at the bottom of your wall, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like it's eating. Oh, yeah, I should move. It's, it's definitely I'm so excited feeding. for the comments on this where people are going to be like, you need to sell your house. Imme I've seen this before and it's killer mold and you need to it, you need to move na burn it down. And it, that yeah. mold has priors. Yeah, it you will, need to get out of there. <laughs> None of it is that important or that exciting. It's just some mold on a home. It's just like <laughs> this is two weeks before the house and poltergeist sucked itself up into another dimension. <laughs> All right, well, I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> yeah, well, while you're gone, Gavin, there's concern. There's concern the heat, when it heats up over the next few weeks, will just naturally kill this. And if you want to see where it goes, what what lengths are you willing to go to protect this? I could bag this? it. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. You're going to bag it? Or like tape, tape transparent plastic it. around it? 
Yeah. Ooh. The the toothbrush gagging guy with the like the cold is gonna bag the slime wall and that'll be okay. I that sounds so gross. Huh. Well, you were unfazed by that, and I can't believe that you were just like, yeah, I'll bag it. You did a mean? really good job of matching photos. Did you attempt that, or is that just naturally the photo you took? Uh, I just sort of remembered taking it there. Just took it again. That's really good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. I have new vocabulary I found out, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, like if ever we're, um, <laughs> like, like, I was, like Dan was here recently, we're deciding what to eat every day and what to have for lunch and stuff. And uh, if he suggested something, I'd be like, no, nah, that's like a seventh round pick. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like the way it sounds. And it's, it's uh, Andrew's go to. But do you understand <laughs> what that means? Or. No. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, neither did Dan, um, but just based on the context I gave him. But uh, <laughs> you hey, were but giving, you think... were explaining it to <laughs> no, Dan. No. Uh, the, the only thing I was saying was it sounds like a seventh round pick. <laughs> <laughs> and but then what I, does he I, infer from that? Do you think? I think just from my tone, I could have said anything, and he would have known I wasn't fussed about having uh, mm. Jersey Mike's again or whatever. <laughs> um. By the time this is out, all, all of our stuff will have been out and everything or whatever. But at the time of this recording, the Rock Not Rock draft has come out a week ago or just before the uh, Condor Man release. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts on how the Rock Not Rock draft, w with a little bit of time sort of between you and the, and the fan reaction, any thoughts on Rock Not Rock draft? I saw a lot of comment leavers who are pretty happy with crack is my <laughs> first pick. <laughs> so uh, maybe crack. I was onto something. I, I just, I think, I, I said it to Eric at the time, and I, I think it's still true. I think it's probably the best piece of content we've ever made. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I feel like the Crack Rock is the Johnny Manziel of the Rock pick. Like, it's flashy on the board. You feel really good about it in the offseason, but if you were to put your team to the test, it's going to fall apart. You don't want Crack Rock on the roster. Can you I say what you it. just said again, but in English? <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny Manziel, oh, he's a football player. <laughs> um. Uh, no, nah, it's just uh, people like it. People like the pick. Um, I think it's important to uh, to remember going forward. I'm sure we, I don't think we have any drafts lined up, but if we do more, which I assume we will, it's a good data point. Oh, wow. There's a poll done there. Yeah, there were oh, a you couple by a polls. Lot. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If there was just one poll supporting Gavin in his winning here. Uh, then, you know, whatever. The poll on the subreddit, overwhelmingly Gavin. The poll on the YouTube channel, overwhelmingly Gavin. There's 934 mm -hmm. votes on uh, the subreddit poll. 5.5K votes on the YouTube poll. Gavin with 52%. Holy shit. Woo. Gavin, so you far and away... Or, I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what they voted for. It's it <laughs> truly doesn't matter. But, do but it doesn't well, matter. I don't, what the I, I, don't, I don't care what the audience thinks. What? Uh, well, I think they decide for the. the what do you yeah, mean? I feel like we have to respect the final yeah, opinion think, of the audience. I think the entire <laughs> point I, is. I don't think decision. I'm just I'm just letting you know. I don't think I'm ever going to do that. Well, but well, I know it, you it, won't. Look, yeah. look, Nick won the first one, right? <laughs> we decided that. Yeah, the, the audience definitely, decided. definitely won the second one. I, so I think that's one. One to Nick, one to me. And uh, I wonder what Maul will say. I'm so curious I... about the Maul draft. It's so different. If people are going to think that it's <laughs> like, <laughs> people are going to just be like so ready for another Rock Not Rock. And it's just <laughs> us being so happy about it. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you and all the issues. My favorite part of it is the people who have determined that they have a better way to run Ugh. the draft. Which is totally fine. You may have a better. I all I can say to that is, uh, you and your friends should do that draft and have yep. the best fucking fun and just enjoy it and have so much fun doing it because they are a ton of fun. They're just a ton of fun to do. Uh, but if you had issues with the way we ran the rock not rock draft, those same. I mean, it's the exact same thing in the mall draft. Uh, so just go in forewarned. <laughs> Although I gotta say, I think the mall draft. Uh, is just as good in a different way. It's so good. It's so good. But man, Gavin, congr congratulations. You did a These great are job. crazy though. Like, look at it. It's like everyone else is second place almost. It's like, there's not, it's, it's weird. It's like, yeah. Especially that Spotify one. Yeah. It's wild. Nick, Nick and Eric have, and Jeff almost have the exact same amount. 
There's one name you, you're lacking. You missed there. Which one? Uh, well, name? you you clearly lost. I was trying not I, to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think if people voted uh, with their minds instead of their hearts, saying I was a downer on the picks, I think I would have a higher percentage of the vote. <laughs> That's what I think. I think people need to start thinking logically and not emotionally in these drafts. I gotta I go. <laughs> I gotta agree with Andrew. Gotta I think it's also. Andrew. It's disrespectful to Jeff. He had the second biggest killer on the board for anybody, and he's not getting the respect it deserves. Oh, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that the content exists. Yeah, we should. Um, so we need, to, we need to uh, after this probably arrange the next office day because we've we're getting to the point where all of our supplemental that we've been sat on for months is going to be out. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, we discussed maybe watching the Dracula movie. Uh, somebody mentioned that we had said we were going to watch Day of the Dolphin, that movie about how George C. Scott trains a dolphin to kill the president. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we got more Sloppy Joes we could do. <laughs> I don't know what the next draft would be, but I feel like, I feel like there's, a, there's a, going to be a, a rich tapestry of drafting in our future. I mean, if you uh, pick I, the I next movie, we're almost snake drafting movies to watch, right? Because you, you, pick, you had the last oh, pick as yeah, well? Yeah. Oh, one. yeah. And I also don't have to have the next movie pick. We can watch whatever you guys want to. I just want to watch more movies with you. Same. Jeff, you suggested... Did you suggest recently having a clock that... <laughs> yeah, slop a clock clock? Slop a clock. <laughs> yeah, I said we should make a clock that's just empty, but it just says slop a clock at 11.15. As, as, as soon as you said that, I was imagining like the, uh, the lobby of a big office building with all the different time zone clocks. And you could have like a panel of four clocks, and on each time zone, it would have the correct... Indication for slop o'clock. <laughs> like Tokyo, it's gonna be London. There's no numbers on it. It just when it's slop o'clock, it just says it's time. <laughs> it turns off yeah. yeah, like the London one would be like seven in the morning or something. <laughs> that's a great idea. Oh, that's a great yeah, like highlight. What if every clock was colored differently to reflect when slop o'clock was for that clock? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Oh, man. Andrew, are you taking Paxlovid? No. What? Paxlovid? Paxlovid. It's like a COVID treatment. The pills no. you take. No. I'm it, uh, <laughs> they say, <laughs> they say uh, you might want to look into it. They say, uh, I called my doctor and they gave it to me for free. So um, uh, you take it for like five days, like in the morning and at night. But they say one side effect of it is that it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And I just don't know anybody else that's taken it. Mm. to confirm but i just wanted to see because this is it is the most understated side effect ever it is the most intense bad taste and it has been in my mouth <laughs> I, it will not oh, go away no. it's like sour and bitter at the same time and it's everything i take it's like the opposite of like you know how when people were like losing their sense of smell and taste when yeah. they had covid it's like now my sense of smell and taste has been replaced by sour bitter <laughs> it's like, like you wish hey, you oh. could lose your sense of smell and taste. yeah a little bit a little bit it's been so interesting have you tried to eat anything overpowering like a big garlic or something uh no maybe i should try to eat a big garlic tonight i'll, I'll look into that, <laughs> I'll look into that. <laughs> when was the last time you had a big garlic jeff <laughs> it's been a, it's been a minute you know, a while. you know, garlic gives me the worst of the farts. Uh, we've <laughs> really? determined, Emily and I have, yeah. That, like, she, if you take a, sometimes we take a clove of garlic and cut it in half, and then you pour a little olive oil and some salt on it, and then you just let it roast in the oven for, like, uh, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. And then when you pull it out, it's, like, soft and chew. It's, like, almost, like, creamy, and there's, like, garlic juice everywhere. And if I eat, like, that entire clove of garlic, which I could do, <laughs> I, I got to sleep outside. It's the, it, it, as, as a matter of fact, when, you know, someday we've talked about how we're going to, uh, we're going to record the episode in the, in the porta potty together. Uh, -huh. uh, I was going to try to eat like three cloves of that garlic the night before. So that when I come in and we get locked in, it's just, it's just a nonstop onslaught. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just want to make it as torturous as possible. As it, is it smell and loud or is it just loud what what are we talking here like what's the combination of is it forceful and smell odorous smell. okay smell just smell. smell just like the worst just most heinous smell. smelling thing yeah oh just man. roasted garlic eat a bunch of roasted <laughs> garlic tonight and see what oh. happens man speaking it, of smell eric where's our can of disgusting shit 
I don't know. I'll, uh, <laughs> I will get it for the next office day. Or a can of disgusting shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love what a description. Because okay. we should get that on the calendar. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, don't we have to dig a six foot hole too? Should. Yeah. Uh, it's been about a year since the oh, bean hole. Right. Jackhammer. Yeah, you need yeah a we, jackhammer were gonna, on it? we were going to dig a six foot hole with a jackhammer and then we were going to put a USB drive with us talking about it at the bottom of the yeah, yeah, yeah. sign. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get all this on the calendars. I never got one of those Falcon signs. Did you guys get one? No. No, no I haven't mm. seen it come through. I'll, I'll have to talk with uh, merch. It's very weird. Yeah, I think came and went before. Uh, I didn't even know it. Well, Did the it Falcons sell? took it, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, it sold out immediately. God damn. Maybe yeah. we should have stopped raising our number. Yeah, maybe we could go back and do like a second run of Falcon signs and scrumping signs or something because I see uh, people ask for them a lot. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll uh, I'll poke at it, see what's up. I'm not trying to rush you to the end. I'm giving you your 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 uh, tone was your, your tone said everything. Man. Clearance. So yeah. Uh, hey, Gav, how did you feel about the coronation? That's a great question. Could I be honest with you? Yeah, yeah. I I just read about it in the news the next day. I had no idea it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be in London for it, uh, sitting at a, oh, sitting God. in the uh, the Admirals Club in, at uh, Heathrow. Yeah, apparently all the British people were supposed to do some sort of I don't know what was it. They wanted everyone to like <laughs> what <laughs> swear fealty to the new king in some way. I, I, either way, I didn't know it was happening. I missed it. Did you not swear fealty to your king yet? No, aren't Give you required the mail to? In? Yeah, it's, it's like registering you know, for select I'll service. get that on the calendar, too. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get out of the post office when you're 13, 18, and swear fealty to the crew. <laughs> I'll do it later. I'll get, no, I'll get the next one. Yeah? You can start now. You can prepare. You'll be ready for the next one. Express post. What about the sticks? Have you sent the controller sticks yet? No, I'm Ooh. waiting for Jeff to put the thing to give me the thing he wants to send. Me. Oh man, I need to get that to you. It's just those video games I bought for Andrew a year ago. I need to get them to him. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm putting a hard cut off on it. Okay. I'll check I'll check my front porch a week from today. And if, well, not, let me, if it's not let there, me I'm get, sending it. Let me get COVID clear, and then as soon <laughs> yeah, as I'm clear, I'll drive over fair. and drop those games off. All right, fair play. All right. <laughs> this is fun. It was good. I missed you guys. It's good to be back. Oh man, I missed you guys. Are we doing this again next week? I believe so. Gavin, do you think you could uh, do us a favor and come down with COVID between now and then so that we don't feel so, so you don't feel left out? We don't want you to feel left out. I'll do my best. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, before we leave, <laughs> I should tell you guys, guess what I ate for lunch today? <gasps> pastrami? Oh. I, yeah, fuck. I ate a pastrami sandwich. Pastrami? Yeah, I yeah. ordered it. And not so only did I. I did I order one, I ordered the pastrami sandwich, the one that made me throw up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, it's been over a year now, right? Yeah, and it was fine. I it, you know, I I don't th I think that the new one uh, that I, I eat is better at the other mm -hmm. place. But uh, I'm over like it was fine. I didn't have any any icks or anything the whole time. <laughs> That's I ate the great. whole thing. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy. I think I've I think I've 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 uh, climbed that mountain. And where are we on corn dogs? Oh man, I can't eat any more corn dogs because I maybe I said one I day. wasn't gonna. No, I said no. <laughs> no cravings. Uh, yeah. The, well, there's been some confusion. There's a like a Asian hot dog place over actually by that new uh, hot pot place I told you about, and they have some crazy corn dogs that are like like crazy Japanese corn dogs that seem pretty interesting. But I I just don't know. I feel like the line gets blurry, and I don't want to cross it without realizing it. So I've just been staying away. <laughs> but I but I'm a little bummed because they do some of them look kind of neat. <laughs> That's such a strict rule. <laughs> well, listen, man. Do they call them corn dogs? Yeah, some of some of them. I gotta <laughs> look. I gotta be very strict with me. Like I, this is like if I start wavering on yeah. corn dogs, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, it's you know, <laughs> it's at a music festival. I only eat corn dogs at music festivals. This is how I this is how I become an alcoholic again, right? You like suddenly sure. I'm like, oh, I'll just have one shot of whiskey, and the next thing you know, I'm a fucking I'm dead in a ditch somewhere. So I gotta be <laughs> I gotta be I gotta be strong <laughs> against the corn dog urge. That happens yeah. with sodas and energy drinks. You're like, I only, I only drink them at the office. And then we had all of those energy drinks for like face jam. So you drank some of all, all of, them. of them. And then you're like, and now I'm going to have a Red Bull. And it's like, don't, <laughs> don't do this. Stop doing yeah. this. I think what's interesting with Jeff, though, is that when I think of what his code is, it's not saluting and no corn dogs. Like those are the, <laughs> the life that is 
You're a unique individual. I, I don't think there's anyone else that those are like the lines. No corn dogs and the saluting. I just don't think a journey has ever directly started with someone eating a corn dog and ending up in a ditch. I, well, listen, mm, slippery slope. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> and also, I've been told, uh, I haven't confirmed it myself, but I've been told in, uh, by some of the comment leavers that uh, I can salute as of 2008. They changed the rules. Oh. So I need to look and oh, see if that's shit. real or not. Because if it is, I'll, I'll salute the shit out of that flag. Uh, I'd be so fucking excited to be able to do that again. You have no idea. Uh, oh God! By the way, I know I just keep rolling, but I just I haven't talked to you guys in so long. I ran into the most lovely comment lever at the Trader Joe's the other day, and uh, he was working there, and we had the nicest little conversation about F Face. So uh, oh, shout out awesome. to Robert at Trader Joe's. He was a nice guy. What did he bring up? Uh, he likes the podcast. We did uh, Andrew's oh. a thing, you know. <laughs> just, it's, it's, usual stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, usual stuff. <laughs> Every conversation with a stranger is uh, love the podcast and then a question about Andrew. Like, yeah, is that, that, Andrew's not real though, People right? trying to get behind the curtain on Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know any more than you do, I promise. I, lo I love those conversations so much. I do too. Being, being able to talk with just random people in the world about <laughs> this Canadian that I know is magic. <laughs> it, it, really, it really is like, like when somebody comes up to you on the street and mentions face... It really is like saying like a secret handshake. It's like saying, yeah. "Hey, uh, I'm a member of a of a club where we all speak the same language and we all have the same interests." It's like it was like back in the '90s, 2000s. If you if you li like like you could be in into all kinds of stuff, right? But if you met somebody and they also liked the Beastie Boys, you knew they were like, "Oh, they're okay." Yeah, like, uh, we we can we can like we've got that that's a big enough commonality that I could be okay with this person. I feel like you like when you meet somebody and they mention that they're a comment lever, uh, it's like you just like you instantly all your guards down a little bit and you're like, oh okay, I know this person. Yeah, I've talked about it before, mm -hmm. but it, it immediately eliminates uh, a chance for me to suck at small talk, and we're only oh, no <laughs> talking yeah. about something that's real and <laughs> that we both know about. Great, love it. Well, should we kill it? I think we should. Yeah. We should, well, yeah. And Not then the do podcast. it again next week. The, the, no, the no, the episode. Yeah. 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 Of course. Uh, okay, well, this is that then. Uh, podcast <laughs> is over. This, this is the, ple the, the post pleasantries where we tell you that, hey, uh, if you really do like Face, uh, if you like to listen to it, uh, even with a semblance of, uh, of enthusiasm, uh, it sure would be lovely if you would tell some people about it. Uh, these kind of podcasts, they live or die based on the, the like, uh, word of mouth. Uh, for some reason, but that, that's just the way it is. My hands are tied. I don't understand it. Uh, but I know that if you tell people about f face, and then if they like f face, and then they watch f face or listen to f face, and then they tell somebody about f face, then sort of like The Last of Us, seven to ten years from now, we'll destroy the world, and that's kind of where we're headed. So give us all the stars, and uh, we'll see you next week. And we'll see you at RTX July seventh through 9th, RTXAustin.com to get tickets. Come to the f face museum. Wow. I saw some people say that the one. Where we uh, immediately t start talking about alter egos and Errol and stuff is is quite a good entry point. I don't oh, know if maybe that's true, but a lot hmm. of people said I would sh I would pick this one to show to a friend. Yeah, a lot of people are like, even people I meet, I like I had to make somebody. I ran into somebody in Italy who was like, "Oh, what have you been up to?" And I go, "Oh, I do this podcast." Place, and he's like, "Oh, well, I don't really listen to podcasts." And I was like, "You have to promise me you'll listen to it. Just one episode." And he's like, oh, "Okay." Some people, if they're on the fence, they don't think they like podcasts. Let them know they do. You do like podcasts. You love them. You just don't know it yet. Jesus Christ. Open your fucking ears. They're great. How do they feel about drafts, though? How do they feel about the tuxedo? We had so many angles. You like cookbooks? That's what I've been up to. Okay, bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Poochie needs to return to his home planet. How do you spell Jeff? Rise of the robot people. Which side do you sleep on? Cosmic Crisp loves us. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. Face.